Well, we're continuing our Advent journey, and this evening we'd like to read from the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, it is our Advent journey. We're continuing it. We're moving on down. Like I told you last week, you guys get the jump start on everybody else because we are now up to four lights. So, remember, we've got hope, which we'll see if I can light the candle. I guess we have no hope tonight. It's over. Game over, man. We'll see. If I could just get this lit. There we go. Although, if this is anything like Sunday, this will be very entertaining on the hope candle. And then I learned just to pull it down. So remember, we've got hope and love and peace. I can get up here for this one. And we jump now into joy. So we got all four lit. Our journey is continuing on its way, but we're getting closer and closer to the end. The best part about tonight is, I don't know if you know that sweet smell, of, say like on Christmas and you smell the cookies or you know the Christmas meal is being made and you smell that turkey or ham, whatever's in the oven. For us, it's meatballs usually in the roaster. And you can smell it. Oh, and your mouth starts watering a little bit. That's how close we are because Christmas We just got a scent. We got a taste of what it's going to be from Matthew. Because it even says, the birth of Jesus took place in this way. So we just got a sampling of what is to come. But the journey is continuing as we get closer and closer. But today we have Joseph. Now, Joseph isn't exactly somebody we hear an awful lot about, specifically this Joseph. Kind of is one that's only in the very beginning of Jesus' life. The Christmas story is a couple of the... The little stories when he's a little younger. Then you kind of hear about him when they say, well, Jesus, you're the son of the carpenter. Maybe Joseph, but he's not there at the crucifixion. Uh, Where'd he go? Maybe he's gone. Maybe he's not. We don't quite exactly know where he is in the moment, but he's not mentioned very much after these stories. But here he is at the very beginning, in this integral part to the beginning of Matthew, in the very early time of Jesus' life. Now, It's important to know where Joseph sits in the grand scheme of things. Because from Abraham to David, we got 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, we got 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile all the way to Jesus, we've got 14 generations. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot. You got over 2,000 years, or quite a few years going on here. But that's important to know that he is in the line, the line from the promise all the way to here. He's from David. He's from the beginning from Abraham. He's going and going and going, and here he is, and he's going to be the father-in-law to Jesus. But we need a little more background. We know who he is. We know what line he came from. But it's also important to know where Mary and Joseph are standing at this particular point. Mary and Joseph are arranged to be married. 
They're together. They've been promised probably by families to be together. And they're the, probably the fathers were together making arrangements, making negotiations about how this is going to happen. How's, how's Mary going to become part of Joseph's family? It's all been arranged. It's been set up. There's not really a choice in the matter. They may have loved each other. They may have loved each other later in life. We're not entirely sure. But we do know at this point, this is set up and it's arranged which is way different than probably most of us who in this room are married or have been married at some point, went through. Most of us probably didn't have the other father or somebody set us up. I sure didn't. I never thought I'd be dating Mindy right away. And then lo and behold, we asked, are we dating? Yeah, I guess we are. And then, of course, we went down the road. We got engaged. We decided, yes, we do love each other. Sure. I asked her, will you marry me? And it wasn't a, you will marry me. It was a, will you? And she said, yeah, yes, yes, of course I will. And then we still got up to the front of the altar. She still could have said no. I probably could have said no, but neither of us said no. And we're still together for 12 years. Our anniversary is on Sunday, so it's good to remember that we've been together that long. But in that, these two are together. They have been arranged in this marriage. Don't have a big say in what's going on. But here's the thing. They are together, but they have not been together. Okay, are you following me? They haven't had any kind of relations whatsoever. So the fact that Mary is pregnant is scientifically impossible from Joseph if they have not been together. They haven't been. There's no way she could be pregnant in this relationship with Joseph. No way, none, zilch, nada. That is a problem. That's a problem, especially for Joseph, who's probably thinking, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do here? And Mary's probably freaking out a little bit about what's he going to do. I trust God, but what's Joseph going to do? What is going to happen? There's a lot that could happen. Honor is at stake here. If this has happened, well, this is adultery. And probably by the letter of the law, he could take her out to the street, have her stoned, kill, killed. That's the end. Because he didn't do it. Somebody else did this. And But she deserves to be punished, is what the law would probably say. But he wants to dismiss her quietly. Now, I don't know exactly how the rest of her life's going to go if he, she gets dismissed. Odds are that somebody's going to eventually find out she's pregnant, and it's going to be rough. But Joseph doesn't think he's going to really want any part of this. He plans to dismiss her quietly. This is quite a dilemma. Quite a dilemma to Joseph. Do I stick with this woman? Do I stick with Mary? Even though I feel like she must have done something, because I didn't. What am I supposed to do here? There's fear on both sides. Now, have you ever had a real good dilemma in your life where you've wrestled and wondered, what am I supposed to do? That's where we are, right here, right now. And I want you to watch this quick video from the Skit Guys that, is, that shows this wrestling that's taking place with Joseph. And what will the future hold? There were 14 generations between Father Abraham and King David. Fourteen more generations between David and the Babylonian exile. And fourteen generations later, the great king would be born. A two thousand year lineage comprised of slaves and kings, heroes and adulterers, prophets and prostitutes. They were the faithful and the faithless. So what kind of king would this be? While many dreamed of the day this king would come, it began as a real-life nightmare for one man. A good man, with God's lot cast upon him. Joseph. I promise you, Joseph, I am telling you the truth. I'm not saying you don't believe it. I'm just saying... I don't know if I do. So, what are you saying? She's pregnant! I have a 
I've been with her. The baby's not mine. Take Mary as your wife. I can't do this. I don't. I don't want to hurt her. But I. I can't. Joseph, you are a descendant of David. Your ancestors have taken great steps of faith, and now it is time for you to step out. Take Mary as your wife. But the baby is... What is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. It is prophecy fulfilled. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God with us. God with us. Emmanuel. Messiah. <gasps> Dream, a heavenly visitation, and what was distressing became a blessing, a blessing that would challenge Joseph's faith, demand every ounce of his character, and forever alter the course of his life and yours. God with us. What? kind of king would this be? So in that wrestling, in that wondering, what, what am I supposed to do? There is a sense of joy. It might not necessarily be the kind that you expect with the bouncing and jumping and everything, the joys to the world, but a joy in the promise the joy that Joseph is told this baby will be different. He's going to save his people from their sins. God is fulfilling the promise that he's made from generation to generation to generation and on and on and on. Trust in God. Trust. Trust that this is the right thing to do. Take Mary as your wife. Trust that this is part of God's plan. Hope, peace, love, joy in what the angel says. Specifically, that the promise of God, the promise that God is with us, Emmanuel, God is with us. That's a promise to you and to me. That's a promise that we're never alone, even in the wrestling, even when we wonder, what are we supposed to do? God is there saying, God is with us. I am with you. And the cool thing in Matthew is it starts with a promise and it ends with this promise. After the lineage, we get right here to the story of Joseph, and it says, You will name this child Emmanuel, God with us. At the very end, as Jesus is leaving, Jesus says, I am with you always. Always, even to the end of the age. I will always be with you. It's a promise that goes all the way through Matthew and goes even beyond Matthew, that God is with us. These are words of comfort and joy in dark times, in the cloudy times, even in the joys of our lives. Words of hope, peace, love, and joy for all people. The commentary I read from Mitzi Minor for today had this to say about that. All indications are that our writer knew, Matthew knew, dark and difficult days. But in the midst of them, he tells his audience that God is trustworthy. God is fulfilling promises long made. God has launched the renewal of all creation. God is with us in Jesus, always. Here are words of comfort and joy for any of us who read this gospel, who hear this gospel in any time. God is with us, always. Joseph trusts God. Joseph, much like Mary, trusts God, even though it defies logic, even though it defies what the world would say. They both trust in God. And Joseph will become the stepfather to Jesus. Jesus comes into the world at Christmas. 
and things are never the same again. The joy that brings, this is great joy that comes into my heart hearing these words, that God is with us. It's beyond all explanation, the joy that you can feel, the peace, the hope, and the love. And as we await with joy the birth of Christ in a few days, and remembering that, we wait with joy that the promise that God is with us, and we await with joy the promise that he will come again. That's a wonderful promise through all the ages and all the ages to come. Thanks be to God for being with us today and always. Amen.